In Memory of Dick Robinson and sponsored by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Hi, everybody. I'm Representative Sharice Davids from the Kansas 3rd District. I am so excited to join you all today to talk about Sharice's big voice, A Native Kid Becomes a Congresswoman. Uh, we, just, we just put this book out. I'm so excited about being able to participate in the National Book Festival and to have a good conversation with you today. To be honest, when, when I was young, I don't know that I really connected with any books um, in that way. I, I don't I don't remember reading books that kind of changed changed my life or my view of the world necessarily when I was younger. And you know that could be because I uh, I didn't see characters that I that characters that I connected with. And um, you know only one percent of characters in all the books uh, have any native uh, native characters. And, um, that's like a pretty big thing to think about. And so I hope that, um, that we'll get to see more and more books with lots of different kinds of characters, with lots of different kinds of experiences. And when you, when you see the, when you see Sharice's big voice, I hope that's one of the things that you notice. When I think about how Sharice's big voice might be able to uh, open a new world or or new experiences to others. I I hope that people, uh, kids or anybody who reads the book, can see that all of us have our own path, our own journey, and that one of the most important things we can do is to be true to ourselves and to our own journey that we're on. And uh, every journey has ups and downs and and twists and turns and uh, sometimes there'll be people cheering you on, and sometimes it'll feel like there are people who are doubting you. And um, and then sometimes, you know, we might we might doubt ourselves and wonder if we can if we can do what we're trying to do. And um, and and you can, first of all, but also uh, it, it's really important to listen to the folks who who support you. And um, I think that. This book hopefully will help people see that we're not alone in our experiences and that um, you, you deserve to be seen and you deserve to be heard just like everybody else. The idea for Sharice's Big Voice, I don't know that it started off as Sharice's Big Voice. I knew that I, I had the idea, I want to write a, I want to write a book. And then I thought, I want to write a kid's book. And some of the reason that I thought about that is because we we have so many different uh, people in our country and uh, people with different experiences. And sometimes we don't get to hear sometimes we don't get to hear all of those stories. And, um, you know, of course, I you know, I got to be one of the first two Native American women ever elected to Congress. And um, that's a, a really awesome uh, uh, thing that I got to do, but there were so many other things that I did before that. And I think that we went through this process where it was trying to decide what stories to share with people. And, um, sometimes it seems like we only hear the, um, the end result. And it's important to know that when I was a kid, I talked a lot. I still talk a lot. But when I was a kid, I talked a lot. I got in trouble in school sometimes for talking a lot. And um, it turns out that that ended up being one of my bigger strengths. And um, it also helped me learn how to listen to people because uh, other people want to talk too. And it's really helpful to listen. And so um, the process was, it kind of took longer than I thought it would because uh, we all have lots of stories and trying to figure out which ones were the most fun to share, what were the important details that people needed to know about me uh, and my journey. Like, I don't like onions on my pizza. 
I still don't like onions on my pizza. Um, those are the kinds of things that it was, it was fun, but it also took a long time. And then, and then we got to look for an, an illustrator. So, uh, Joshua, our illustrator is, uh, first nations from Canada and has an Ojibwe woodlands, uh, art style. And, and he just brings the story to life with the color and, um, and the characters that he, um, that, that he drew and, it was, I mean, it was such an amazing process to go through and see the words that, uh, to the stories that we were telling, but to watch them come to life on the page uh, was pretty phenomenal. When I was young, I was actually really, I, I wasn't a big reader and I wasn't a big writer. And I remember feeling kind of scared about writing when I was younger, when I was in school and, and I was scared of writing something that, that wasn't good. And, um, it's interesting to, to see how now I, I feel like I have to write a lot but I'm not scared of it anymore the way that I used to be. And that's probably part of how, uh, how I was able to go from as a young person being scared of writing to now, uh, to now being an author. And I think that some of that had to do with practice. You know, I, I practiced a lot. I started reading a lot more um, as I got older. And I think that if, who knows, maybe if, if I had seen more books when I was younger that um, I really connected with, uh, maybe maybe I would have uh, gotten more into reading earlier or writing earlier. But it's been it's been quite the journey. When I think about what inspired me to public service, it's got to be my my mom and and so many people in my family. But you know, I I grew up. Uh, my mom raised my brothers and I have two little brothers. Uh, she raised the three of us by herself and, and she was in the army from before I was born until after I got out of high school and seeing my mom working hard, um, you know, raising us and, and, and serving our country as, uh, you know, in the army was, it just, it was so formative for me. And I think that her influence and her commitment um, to service, because after she got out of the army, she went and worked at the post office. And so my mom has basically spent her entire career as a public servant and getting the chance to see that was, I'm, sh I'm absolutely sure of it was pivotal in my uh, decision to want to go into public service and um, and to recognize that you know we get to have an impact on uh, how on how things in our country work and so I've always felt really like fortunate that we get to do that. I was inspired to write my my story for a couple of reasons. One is I think a lot of us know what it's like to sometimes feel small or maybe feel invisible or just feel not heard. And I think that when, when I was deciding what stories to share and, and what parts of my journey uh, to share, I, I wanted to make sure to, to share the things that, that felt really important for me, like recognizing that when I was a, when I was a kid, I, I talked a lot um, and I got in trouble in school and I had to learn how to listen. And sometimes it would feel like something was wrong with me, but there wasn't something wrong with me. I just needed to learn. Uh, I just needed to learn some new skills and, and that sort of thing and learn to, to recognize that I'm, I'm unique in my own way and that's okay. Um, and then, you know, I also wanted to make sure that people, whoever reads it, kids, 
your parents, your grandparents, um, that that you see that all of our all of our paths are different. And no matter what, that that you deserve to be heard, you deserve to be seen, and that um, that you're you're not alone in some of these things. When I think about using your big voice to fight for your beliefs, I know that I know that we grow up learning what's right, what's fair, what feels good, what doesn't feel so good. Um, and I think sometimes we we just have to we just have to hear it from the people who care about us um, and that we care about that you know you you get you get to decide what you're going to do with your life and sometimes for some people it's going to be um you know being a writer some people probably want to be magicians some people want to be singers and you you get to decide what's going to make you like thrive and get excited and and do what you do what you love doing and if you use your big voice to fight for your beliefs uh, it'll feel like that. It'll feel like, like how it feels when you, when you wake up and you're ready. And I just, I'm excited for, I'm excited for, uh, all the young people that I get to meet so often, uh, you guys are going to do some really cool things. And I'm, I'm excited to watch how all of you use your big voices. Thanks everybody for uh, taking the time to join me to talk about Sharice's big voice, a native kid becomes a Congresswoman. I am so glad I got a chance to participate in the National Book Festival this year. I know these things have looked different over the last year or so, but I'm, I'm really, really glad that we still get the chance to connect and I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Thank you.